So you just bought yourself a brand new fancy pants GVM motorized slider because you want to make dope videos. You wait days for it to come in, finally gets in, you unbox it, you pull it out, the batteries are dead, you charge the batteries, you wait hours, you put the batteries in the remote, you're beaming with excitement, you go into the time-lapse settings and think to yourself, what? There's no way this is right. What do these things mean? I mean, it makes virtually no sense. The settings, as far as time lapses are concerned, are generally the same across all major camera manufacturers within the camera body, but not on this one. For the love, it's whack. A uh, short disclaimer, if you or someone you love works at GVN, please don't send me hate mail. I really do love this product. Thank you, have a great day, goodbye. So the good news is I figured out what the settings on the remote actually correspond to. It took me like half an eternity, but did figure it out and I am here to tell you what on earth that stuff means. So interval first uh, goes from 0.1 to 999.9 and this is the amount of time the motorized base is allowed to move across the slider before it stops again. Now the speed at which the base travels is dictated by the speed percentage in the submenu before you begin the time lapse. So when you click the middle button again, it's dictated by that, that speed percentage right there. So let me go back into this menu. All right, next step we have time lapse, which is the literal amount of time measured in seconds that lapses between the camera shutter being triggered to take a photo by the remote. So it's the amount of time measured in seconds between shutter actuations. It's commonly referred to as the shooting interval, but here they call it time lapse. Up next, we have stop time. And this is how long the base is stopped at any given point along the slider before the next interval of horizontal movement. So on the remote, this is also measured in seconds. One small note, the stop time must be set to a minimum of 0.2 seconds longer than the time lapse. And you'll notice if you try to change the time lapse duration, it'll only go up to a maximum of 0.2 seconds shorter than whatever the stop time is set to. So that's a fancy way of saying stop time must be longer than the time lapse time. So after that is photo, which is the amount of times the remote will trigger your camera shutter. So it's the amount of photos that your camera will take during the time lapse. So next up we have auto loop and your options are either yes or no. And this just means it'll go back the other direction once it reaches the left or right edge of the slider. I always leave this off mostly because I feel like that would look really weird to have a time lapse go back and forth, but that's just me. Speed, you can go from 1% all the way up to 100%, and this is the speed at which the base will travel across the slider during the interval that you set in the previous menu. Then you've got direction, and your options are A to B, B to A, or pause, which is left to right, right to left, or just sit still. And then you have photo, and this is the amount of photos that have been taken so far during the time lapse. Now, unfortunately, there's no way to quickly tell how many photos are left or exactly how long the time lapse will last for uh, without setting a timer on your phone or something like that. So quick breather, I know that was a lot of information, but let's do a sample time lapse just so we have a good understanding of how all the puzzle pieces work together. There is a lot of different ways to go about this, but I'll just show you the method that I prefer and that I use most frequently whenever I'm doing time lapses. Um, you need to work backwards from a given variable, and in order to do that, you need a time-lapse calculator. So the people over at photopills.com have a free one that I use all the time. I'm not endorsed in any way by photopills.com, although how dope would that be? Okay, so here at photopills.com forward slash calculators forward slash time-lapse, uh, you've got this nice time-lapse calculator that's free you can calculate three different things, the shooting interval, the clip length, or the event duration. In this case, I know that my clip length, I want it to be about 15 seconds, which is great for an Instagram story. I know that the event duration is gonna be around an hour and a half. Frames per second, the final video, I want to be at 24 frames per second, which is a pretty common movie frame rate. The image size for my raw files is 50 megabytes per photo. As you adjust this information, it spits out the corresponding data down here. So the shooting interval here, when you're plugging it into the remote, is going to be the time lapse amount of time, and the number of photos is under the photo section of the settings for the remote. Okay, now that we have all these other variables, there is one missing puzzle piece left, and that is the speed percentage that lives in the submenu on the remote. To figure out what the speed percentage will be, I've created this handy dandy graph here. 
Keep in mind, this is only applicable to the GVM 32 inch motorized slider and you have to keep the interval set to 0.1%, otherwise none of this works. If you have a different length slider, you can recreate your own test and create your own graph. And I'll tell you how I did it. So I set the speed percentage to 100% on the slider and let it travel from left to right. And it took 112 photos during that duration. I then set the speed percentage to 1% and let it travel from left to right. And it took 1,316 photos during that duration. That's how I got this graph. So in our example, we need 360 photos to complete an hour and a half duration for a time lapse. So we go on this graph here, we need to set the speed to around 79% on our remote in the sub menu, and that will give us from point A left all the way to point B right, theoretically without going over the edge. It's not 100% accurate, so just keep an eye on it once it reaches the far edge of the slider so it doesn't keep bumping into the edge of it. So I know it's a lot of information. Thanks so much for watching till the end of this. Um, I hope that it helps you and that you go out and make some really rad time lapses. Let me know if you do. It's a really small channel right now, but you guys have been super encouraging. Ryan Timms and Joe Almeido, you guys kind of made my day with some of those comments. So my elbow's on the edge of this desk. Why do elbows, whatever. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. If you aren't already, hit that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video. If you have an idea for another video, comment down below and I will do my best to get to that. Thank you. Peace.